organic, unpredictable, unknown, lovely, beautiful, a sense of fulfillment. This is part of the pleasures of life and not the chores of life. Coming up on Daily Island TV, we use a lot of water, but what happens to it after it's used? We'll tell you soon enough. And the unemployment rate for recent college graduates continues to decrease. What are employers looking for in an ideal candidate? We have that answer coming up. And in sports? The Hawks head to Minnesota looking to bring home some bacon. That's all coming to you now because Daily Island TV is ready to go. I'm Tom Brokaw. For more than 100 years now, the University of Iowa community has been waking up to the Daily Iowa. Today, it's the largest newsroom in eastern Iowa. And now, you can see the news every night on Daily Iowa TV and get it anytime worldwide at dailyiowan.com. Good evening, everyone. I'm Muriel Cloney. Thanks for joining us tonight. And I'm Reed Chandler. Hundreds of UI students gathered in the IMU today, all suited up, all looking for a job or an internship. They were met with 134 employers from all over the country looking for promising students. Officials expected to see anywhere from 1,200 to 1,300 students today. And here's what one employer says they look for in the candidates. What we like to see is students who are engaged, who are flexible, who want to help veterans in our field. And there will be another career fair in the spring. A single person uses 100 gallons of water a day in America. And where does this waste end up? Daily Iron TV reporter Kara Blimschlager has the details. Hand washing. Hand washing. What happens to the water used once it's down the drain? People gathered Wednesday night at the East Side Recycling Center to hear Superintendent Dave Elias answer that exact question. The water rushes through the pipes and goes directly into the wastewater plant. There, they settle the water and take out the inorganics. It is then sent to the landfill. Next, the water goes through aeration and is settled again. Finishing up the process, it goes through a disinfection system and is then poured into the Iowa River. The final result, a clean and clear product. This process comes with a price tag, though. For the 60 gallons of drinking water we use every day, it costs 24 cents takes another 36 cents a day for your 60 gallons and uh, no, 30, excuse me, 32 cents to make a total of 56 cents for us to prepare the water, treat it, and put it back in the river. To make room for this work, Iowa City is combining the North Wastewater Treatment Plant with the South by expanding the South Treatment Plant. We're excited about our project that's going on. That will cost $50 million. This is Kara Benchlager, Daily Iowan TV. Work on the South Treatment Plant began in April of 2012, and it's expected to be complete by February of 2014. And still to come on tonight's newscast, the clothes on your back, often they are made from the backs of underpaid garment workers. We have more on those realities in just a bit. And in sports, pregame is coming up in just a few minutes. And we'll have your weekend weather forecast. But first, we have a quick message from the School of Journalism. Iowa S-J-M-C. Want a major that'll take you somewhere? I joined and now I make videos for the university. I joined and now I work for the most trusted news source in America. S-J-M-C. Welcome back everyone, Brianna here and I've got your weather for the next couple of days. But first, let's dive into, into tomorrow. Friday morning will bring a sunny sky and pleasant 68 degrees. By noon, the temp will rise to 86 degrees. The skies will remain clear into the night with temps close to 59 degrees. The rest of your week weekend will, rem will remain pretty comfortable. You might want to bring an umbrella to the game though, as Saturday brings a 60% chance of rain. Temperatures will stay in the upper 70s, peaking at 80 degrees on Tuesday. The end of the week, though, will bring partly cloudy skies. And that's all I have for weather. Back to you guys at the desk. 
All right, thanks for that, Brianna. And the clothes on your back stand for a lot more than threads. Two garment workers from the Dominican Republic visited the University of Iowa to talk about students about garment factories. And our Spotlight Iowa City reporter, Rebecca Hager, had its chance to talk with them. These two women, Maritza Vargas and Yeni Perez, work for Ultra Gracia. Ultra Gracia is a factory in the Dominican Republic that makes college apparel for over 600 campuses. But the company does more. They pay workers three times the minimum wage. The factory also provides a safe and healthy workplace. But Vargas and Perez have been through a lot. They told me they worked in a sweatshop with terrible conditions before Alta Gracia. Now they travel the world to spread the word about fair treatment in factories. If you want to learn more about Alta Gracia, you can go to ultragraciaapparel.com. Thanks, Rebecca. And here are some of your top stories beyond Iowa. Interpol used, issued an arrest notice for the White Widow, a fugitive from Britain. Kenya authorities requested the arrest for Samantha Leithwaite on charges connected to explosives and conspiracy to commit a felony. However, there is no evidence that she's connected to the terrorist attack on Nairobi Shopping Mall. Leithwaite's husband participated in the 2005 London suicide bombings. A really large rubber ducky is coming to America. Warning, it will not fit in your bathtub. On Friday, Pittsburgh will welcome its own version of the rubber ducky that has traveled the world. Now, the duck itself doesn't travel the globe, but the Dutch artist who created the designs does. The replica will be built right in the city of Pittsburgh. And Hoffman, the artist, said the duck is great because it doesn't discriminate, it doesn't have boundaries, and lacks a political connotation. Floyd of Rosedale on the line this weekend in the Twin Cities read. And that's right, Muriel, for everything you need to know in order for the Hawks to bring home the pig, let's toss it over to Josh Bolander and Lauren Moss with more. Guys? Thanks, Reed, and welcome back to the Daily Iowan TV Sports Pregame Show. She's Lauren Moss, I'm Josh Bolander, and we have a ton to get to you on this trophy game edition of the program. Yeah, Josh, quite the lineup we have for you tonight with a major shakeup in our producer power rankings, an interview with the Hawks' man of steel, Mark Wiseman, and our weekly installment of Ross Rants, and of course, Inside the Numbers. And that's where we kick things off tonight. While the experts may focus on Minnesota's strong running game, Iowa's versatility and depth in the backfield should give them an advantage when it comes to running between the tackles in the Twin Cities Saturday afternoon. Four backs got 10-plus touches in the Hawks' 59-3 drubbing of Western Michigan last Saturday, a rarity in the Kirk Ferentz era, and vital for the health of Mark Weissman, who finally received a break after carrying the load in the Black and Gold's first three games this year, in which he led the country in carries and ranked third in rushing yards. Expect the Gophers to be up for the test, though, especially with beastly fifth-year nose tackle Rashid Hagman marshalling many's defensive front. Jerry Kill's anchor on the defensive side of the ball already has a sack, 16 tackles, and two block field goals to his name in 2013, and revenge on his mind after his unit surrendered 31 points to Kirk's crew last year in Kennedy. If you don't come hard, they don't come hard and sweep you away, so you have to have that mentality where you got to give 100% every game, so... You know, to ask me if, I, if I'm confident, you have to be confident. If Hageman is the man to watch for between the tackles, senior safety Brock Vereen will be the key to stopping the Hawks' aerial attack. On top of helping out his defensive front seven with 152 career tackles, the six-foot, 202-pound safety also has three career interceptions and added a little fuel to the fire in the Florida Rosedale rivalry after proclaiming his hatred for the black and gold online earlier this week. Iowa's head hawk will most likely brush off the commons, however. Kirk Ferentz is 9-5 in trophy games versus Minnesota since becoming the head man for the black and gold in 1999. The 15-year vet has outscored the Gophers to the tune of 441 to 286 points in 14 career matchups. Expect his counterpart Jerry Kill to be up for the challenge, though with Minnesota's head coach improving in each of his three seasons at the helm of Gophers and splitting his only two career showdowns with Ferentz. With a win, Kill's crew would improve his program's overall record against the Hawkeyes to 62-43-2, with the trophy series a bit closer at 41-35-2 in favor of the Gophers, with the first Floyd of Rosedale game played all the way back in 1935. A lot of conflicted allegiances this weekend in the Hawkeye State, including our own Minnesota native and football editor, Ben Ross. And one thing football fans around the country continue to debate, though, the issue of the player payment in college sports. 
And with Iowa State Athletic Director Jamie Pollard getting involved today, things just got a whole lot closer to home. Ross Rance starts now. Welcome back to this week's edition of Ross Rants, improving your quality of life one bloviated statement at a time. I'd like to start off this segment with a tweet that Iowa State Athletic Director Jamie, Tw uh, Jamie Pollard put out yesterday on Twitter, and I quote, Ask a student body member with thousands of dollars of debt at graduation how they feel about a student athlete saying they should be paid. And you know what, he ruffled a, lot of feather, ruffled a lot of feathers on the Twitter community yesterday with a lot of people said that athletes should still be getting paid. That's just a never-ending battle, it seems like, here in the media. You know what, and I was in that pro-athlete uh, getting paid camp up until I read Mr. Pollard's tweets yesterday, and now I'm on his side. I'll be one of thousands of students at this fine university graduating up to my eyeballs in debt come springtime. And you know what, I just don't agree with an athlete getting paid their tuition, their books, room and board, all of that for all four to f four, or maybe even five years if they get redshirted here at Iowa. That's just not fair to me would you pay mr warren hallway to make just one catch in his five-year career at iowa i don't think so but you know what it is what it is thanks guys and back to you this weekend's twin cities matchup at the bank will surely provide plenty of old school football for both the hawks and gophers ground games clicking on all cylinders the key to iowa's success when it comes to running between the tackles running back mark wiseman and our own ali raisley caught up with the hawkeyes leading rusher to get his take on the gophers Hi guys, I'm here with Mark Wiseman um, talking about the game this Saturday in Minnesota. Uh, you're going to your first Big Ten Conference game. What are your thoughts right now? No, it's going to be a tough game um, on the road, so it's always a hostile environment. It'll um, be exciting to play for, a rivalry game, a trophy game, so it'll be good. How, is it imp or how important is it to keep uh, Floyd in Iowa City, and what, what's your game plan in order to keep him here? Yeah, definitely. It's, uh, it's always important to keep a trophy. Um, get a first Big Ten win is even more important. And, uh, yeah, we just got to control the trenches out there, and hopefully that works for us. Uh, going into uh, Minnesota's home homecoming game, uh, it's a big rivalry. Nerves, w w what are you thinking? Yeah, you're always a little nervous before games, but no more than usual. Um, yeah, you just got to go out there, play relaxed, um, you know, game plan all week, have a great week of practice, and we'll see that it takes us. All right, thank you so much. Thanks. Unfortunately, we are just about out of time on today's edition of the program, but before we head out, here's a look at your latest Big Ten Power Rankings heading into Week 5 of the college football season. Purdue might as well get comfortable in the basement as they continue to sit at number 12, with Illinois, Indiana, and Iowa rounding out numbers 11, 10, and 9 respectively. Iowa's northern neighbors come in at number 8 at this week, heading into this Saturday's Floyd of Rosedale matchup with Penn State sitting at number 7, Michigan State at number 6, and Bo Pelini's Huskers at number 5 after bouncing back from that crushing defeat to UCLA with a big win this past weekend. The biggest shakeup comes in our top third of the, rank of the rankings, where Michigan falls all the way to number 4 after a couple of close scares. Fitz's Cats stand pat at number 3, and Wisconsin jumps all the way to number 2, setting up a matchup in Columbus Saturday night with Ohio State still sitting pretty at number 1. That's all we have for you to that's all we have for you on tonight's program. Highlights and analysis of the Hawks and Gophers battle for Floyd and of Rosedale in the Twin Cities coming on Sunday. But for now, it's on Iowa. And bring home that bacon. Get up for the return of the state's finest attraction. The players are prepared and anxious to get things started. And this time, you too can be ready for every Saturday on the Gridiron. Download the Daily Iowan app for your iPad or iPhone for your official playbook to the 2013-2014 Iowa Hawkeyes football season. And be sure to check out everything black and gold all season long on dailyiowan.com. Friday's game, that's for sure. But that wraps up everything that we have for you tonight. Make sure to catch our Friday's edition of the Daily Island. There's a new art gallery in town, and we'll have the latest on what you can expect to see. And if Farm Bill expires on October 1st, what does this mean for Iowans? You can read about that as well in tomorrow's edition. Thanks for tuning in to Daily Island TV tonight. You can catch us at the same time on Sunday night or anytime online at dailyiowan.com. Have a great night, everyone.